Welcome to part eight of this 10 part series on Bitcoin, where we're really looking at the technical details, where we know the fundamentals are already baked in, or what's very likely to happen over the coming weeks and months. Because what we've had with Bitcoin, if you've been watching the first seven parts, is of recent times, we've had this nice surge where it's gone from 15,000 to 25,000. We are due to complete a correction, and we're going to make some projections on this. In the last video, we spoke about the price targets, the three major price targets that we want to be aware of with Bitcoin, 29,000, 35,000, and I think it was 44, 45,000. But what we're going to look at today is when are the high probability minimum and maximum time zones for Bitcoin to hit its next major high. And what I mean by that is this is actually a, a major high. Right, this twenty five thousand, and especially if it goes down for like a month, right? we're talking about a month of this part over here. We're probably going to see a particular date where we're going to get the next high, if it unfolds as anticipated. Today we're going to finish on a quote from Socrates, so make sure you watch until the end. We always want to get that wisdom, and also before I dive into the time targets, make sure you've registered for my Bitcoin report. It's a video report, and we do timely information on Bitcoin when new data is presented and there's key reversal zones, momentum, pattern and price. So we can see what's very likely to occur. So we know should we buy, should we sell? And it also gives us an indication for the rest of the cryptocurrency market. So with Bitcoin, what we're going to do and what we did in the last video, we said we are anticipating some type of move like this and we're going to anticipate that it's going to end over here. And that allows us to make some projections forward. But just take this with a pinch of salt because this has not been confirmed yet. It's probably going to be towards the end of March before this is confirmed. But just to get a feel for what's likely to happen, we can just make a few projections. So we're going to take this date over here and this price point over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something relatively simple. It's going to be something called a low to high. So in other words, we're going to take this low over here, and we're going to measure how long did it take for this high to form, how many weeks, and then we're going to project that forward from over here as 100%, and then we're also going to take this low, it has not been confirmed yet, and this low, and we're going to do something called a low to low to high. In other words, it's quite common that the typical time it takes for the next high is the same length of time from the low to low. And then we're going to have some type of time target and that can help us just break down what's the very high probability minimum and maximum time for the next run that we can prepare for. Now we do need to redo this when the low is confirmed and if it does get confirmed something like this occurs, maybe not as, as aggressive as that, we'll do it almost at this point. But for today we can just make a few projections and again I'm just going to draw in this point here, anticipating that that's where the low is likely to be with Bitcoin. So let's just use the, it's called the trend-based fib time. We're going to take this low to this high, and we're going to project it forward from this over here. And the key ratio that we want is the 100%. There's a few other ratios as well, but the one that we want is the 100%. All right, so that gives us the minimum time. So we're talking about the 26th of June. 26th of June. But how long was the typical maximum? That doesn't mean it can't go longer. It doesn't mean it can't be shorter because we want to take other factors into consideration as well. But it gives us an indicative feel of what's very likely to occur. So now let's just do that low to low to high. So we're going to measure this low to this low, which has not been confirmed yet. And it's just slightly off the chart, so I'm just going to zoom in slightly. And we just bring it in like so. We'll get rid of these lines. And what we've got now is this time zone. I'm drawing, I'm going to draw a box so it's really, really clear to see. But can we do better? Can we kind of do better than this and just clarify a bit more? The answer is yes. I'm just going to do something. It's a bit more advanced, but it's relatively simple. I have advanced training, by the way. When you get the Bitcoin report, there's a membership area. And I've included some Fibonacci training and some 
anyway of basics that you can dive into. But then I do have some advanced training that you can purchase at a later date as well. But we're just going to do something called an external retracement. Again, I am forecasting here. These, these numbers have not been confirmed. But it gives us an, an indicative feel on the minimum expectation and there's a few key ratios. So what this just tells me, and I, I like to draw it this way, rather than having this big wide box over here like this, what I'll do instead is to say this is the absolute minimum time and price zone. It's, it's very likely to exceed that, very likely. The next one is a, a nice tight cluster. And then the next one is up here. And more often than not, what happens with markets, if one price and time zone is exceeded, it just goes to the next. It's almost like a, a train stopping to one station. And if it leaves that station, it just goes to the next. And so it's relatively common that if we got some type of pattern like this and the price started to go here and it passed this point, it will typically get to the next one. And if it passed this point, it will typically get to the next one. That's what we want to be aware of with Bitcoin. So let's just clarify these dates. So we're talking about the 26th of June to the 21st of August, right? As the market unfolds, it will become clearer. Just the way it became much clearer when this low and this high was exceeded and this was made, it became much clearer from a pattern, price, momentum, and time position that this high was likely and that we're going to get some type of pullback. And we believe that pullback is still going to occur for a few more days, or a few more weeks, actually, a few more weeks. So what we're covering next, in the next part, before we finish on the Socrates quote, is going to be part eight. Part eight, and we're going to go into the expected patterns. We're going to break down the detail on what is this current pattern position, what is this likely pattern position, and how the market unfolds into this range, range over here, how is it likely to unfold, unfold based on crowd psychology and human, humans buying and selling, right? It's just fear and greed playing out. So make sure you grab the Bitcoin report and let's finish on a quote from Socrates. And he says the following. I love the wisdom, right? Wisdom of applied knowledge. I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. Now, what I've realized over time you know, I used to be a teacher of mathematics back in the early or mid-2000s. And I've been coaching clients and mentoring people with trading and other areas of life. Is you can only really help people think. And there's two types of understandings. There's intellectual, which is basically the regurgitation of words. So anyone can regurgitate words. It doesn't actually mean that the person knows what they're saying, as in from an actual level. And the second type of understanding is actual, where the knowledge is applied. Like it makes so much sense that the person sees it as the way to do something. So what I understand here that Socrates is saying is, I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. The same way I'm trying to get you to think about Elliott Wave Theory. That the markets tend to move in fives and threes. You know, I can't teach you that. I can only make you think about it. But if you absorb it and you see it in action, the way you're seeing it in action right now, it can really open up your mind to the learning process. So, Socrates, I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. And your job is to do the thinking and then take it to the next level. So, make sure you're staying tuned for the next part, part eight, where we're going to jump into the pattern position of what's recently happened and what's very likely to occur over the coming weeks.